three, uh, one of the promising leaders of our time. Uh, personally, I would like to say this is a moment of a reunion between a human being and the creator. In as much as we are mourning, myself as a Christian, I'm celebrating. We celebrate life. We also must celebrate, celebrate death because that's the only thing that can unify us with our creator. So, fellow colleagues in Tanzania, may you be comforted in the Lord. There is no way that a human being living under the sun can unify with the creator without dying. So this is the way we are all dying at one point in our lives. I pray that as your morning, God is going to unify your nation, uh, the same mission, the same vision that your, your leader used to have, can it continue like that? We are a living testimony in Zimbabwe that when you have the political turmoil, political disunity, uh, political chaos, you can never see success as a nation. So I pray with you guys that the Lord is going to comfort you and give you a best leader to fill the void. I know you are bleeding, but I pray that a new leader will also see the vision you have as photographers to keep on advancing the, the field, the profession, taking new roles, uh, and then advancing the profession as we go ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Ch Tumba, for those kind words. And once again, we convey our condolences to our brothers and sisters in Tanzania. May we observe a moment of silence for about 10 seconds after which we shall begin our presentation. May we remain silent for 10 seconds as we reflect on our departed leader. Thank you so much for that moment of silence. At this point, I'll kindly ask um, our presenter. So tonight we are blessed to have uh, Trinus who will be giving us uh, a presentation on liver ultrasound entitled Synopsis of Hepatic Anatomy, Pathophysiology and Protocol. Trinus, it's all yours. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Trines Rufaro Katsaura, um, stationed at Parkview Radiology, Harare, Zimbabwe. Uh, apparently, I'm studying towards my master's in master's degree in medical ultrasound at NAST. Um, without further ado, I'm going to get into my presentation. So basically the liver, there is so much uh, about the liver. I'll just um, present on uh, the general overview of the an liver anatomy, the liver functions, the pathophysiology, pro, uh, different pathologies, common pathology that we meet uh, on a day-to-day -day in our workplaces. Um, as well as other modalities that can be used that we can also use um, in trying to come out come up uh, with the diagnosis. So the liver is uh, the largest organ and it's also the largest uh, gland in the human body, weighing around 1.5 kgs. Uh, some literature say 1.4 kgs for, for women and uh, up to 1.8 kgs in men. So this uh, organ is located in the right upper quadrant, just below the diaphragm. Uh, and it is uh, completely behind the rib cage, but the lower edge may be palpated along the right coastal margin during inspiration. Uh, this major organ is um, covered by a connective tissue, which is the glissons capsule. Uh, which attaches the, the liver to the abdominal wall and the diaphragm. 
um, through the falciform ligaments, which then divides this uh, liver into the right lobe, the, which is the largest lobe, and the left lobe, which is the smaller lobe. Uh, because it is frequently involved in systematic and local diseases, uh, sonographic examination is often requested to assess uh, hepatic uh, um, abnormalities. The, this liver, as I had said earlier, that it's the largest solid organ in the abdomen, uh, occupying much of the right upper quadrant. So basically, when a patient comes uh, into the department uh, uh, with the right upper quadrant, we should always take notes uh, to look carefully and to examine carefully this uh, the, the liver as it, it occupies uh, a larger part of the right upper quadrant. Uh, the liver, I'm going to look at the liver anatomy based on the, the vascular anatomy and the functional anatomy. Uh, I'll start by looking just at the lobar anatomy. Uh, we know that the liver is divided into three lobes, which is the right lobe, left lobe, and the corded lobe. Uh, the right lobe, which is the, the, the major lobe uh, in the liver, is separated from the left lobe by the main lobe fissure that passes through the uh, gallbladder, fossa, and the IVC. This right lobe is further divided into the anterior and posterior segments uh, by the right intersegmental fissure. The lo left lobe, on the other hand, uh, is divided into the medial, the medial aspect and the lateral aspect by the left intersegmental fissure. Then the smallest, if I can say, the smallest lobe, which is the corded lobe, is situated in the posterior aspect of the IVC, um, is its posterior border and the fissure for the ligamentum venosum is its anterior surface. Vascular anatomy of the liver is very essential uh, to an appreciation of the relative positions of the hepatic segments. Thereby, we cannot talk about the liver without talking about the vascular anatomy, uh, the venous and the uh, arterial anatomy. So we can talk about, uh, we can divide uh, the liver or we can explain um, the liver segments uh, using the venous anatomy. The hepatic veins uh, mainly emanate from, from the IVC. They drain into the IVC. So there are three, basically three main hepatic veins, which is the right hepatic vein, the middle hepatic vein, and the left hepatic vein. The middle hepatic vein uh, marks the division between the right and the left uh, liver. So this is the, the vein that divides the right lobe from the left lobe. The right hepatic vein divides the right hemiliver into an anterior and posterior section. Then the left hepatic vein divides the left uh, leave, hemiliver into medial and lateral sections. These hepatic veins, they separate the hepatic segments. The major portal vein run through the middle of these uh, segments. As we can see from the image, the ultrasound image, I'll try by all means to be uh, providing an ultrasound uh, uh, image uh, to almost everything I'll be explaining so that we can uh, appreciate when we, we are doing these scans, we can uh, appreciate the, the anatomy, we can appreciate this. Uh, the importance of uh, these segments in the sonographic examination of the liver. Then we also have the hepatic arterial anatomy. Uh, the hepatic uh, artery is the, the one that we have been mainly focusing on. We know anatomically the hepatic uh, artery uh, emanates from the celiac trunk. So this one, will then divide into the right hepatic and the left hepatic uh, arteries. So 
again, when we are when we are discussing the the liver, we cannot uh, we cannot talk about the anatomy of the liver, the segmentation and the functional anatomy of the liver, without first understanding the coenoid anatomy, which is the universal nomenclature for hepatic lesion localization. Um, this uh, coenoid anatomy is based on portal segments and is of both functional and pathologic importance. And because sonography allows evaluation of liver anatomy in multiple planes, yeah, liver lesions can be localized to spe specific segments. Uh, the knowledge of these segments aids in surgical planning and also in the follow-up of lesions over time. So basically the coenoid traditional um, nomenclature for hepatic liver lesion localization uh, divides the liver into eight segments, uh, which are the, the segment one, which is the caudate lobe, uh, segment two and uh, segment two uh, is the lateral segment uh, of the left lobe, which is the superior one. Segment three, uh, the lateral segment uh, of uh, the left lobe, which is inferior. Segment four, you know, it's divided into uh, A and B. It's the medial segment of the left lobe. Then segment five is the anterior segment right lobe. Six is the posterior segment right lobe. Uh, seven is the, the posterior segment right lobe superior. And eight, uh, anterior segment right lobe. Uh, we can fully appreciate it um, on, on the diagram there. So as I was um, saying, uh, the left lobe, it's mainly the segment two and three and four A and B. Segment one is the, the corded lobe, which is uh, there on the posterior aspect, it's the smallest lobe uh, rather. Then segment five, six, seven, and eight are uh, uh, on the right, uh, right hemiliver. So these lobes are divided by these hepatic veins and also the, uh, the portal veins uh, coming to play in this segmentation of the liver. So I'm going to look at the hepatic uh, segmental landmarks that we can use. For segment two and four A, uh, the separating landmarks are the umbilical, umbilical segment of the left portal vein and the left hepatic vein. Uh, uh, segment three and four B, that is the umbilical segment of the left portal vein, the ligamentum teres and the left hepatic vein. Then the in segment four A and a segment eight, which is on the right lobe, uh, the separating landmark is the middle hepatic vein. Then for segment of 4B and uh, 5, is the gallbladder, the interlobar fissure, and the middle hepatic vein. Then we have uh, segment 5, 8, 6, and 7, 5 and 8, then 6 and 7. Those ones are. Um, the major landmark there is the right hepatic vein. Then we've got segment one and one, two, and three. The fissure for the ligamentum venosum is the segmental landmark uh, that separates it from other lobes, from other segments. This is just an illustration of these segments, um, which is showing the the segments two, three, four A and four B uh, in the left lobe uh, uh, divided by the falciform ligament uh, to separate it into the medial and the lateral uh, segments and also the right lobe. Um, to take note is the, the positions for these, uh, the, the lobes, did superior or anterior. 
So when we are talking about the anatomy of the liver, uh, there are normal variants that we come across uh, that we should take note of and that we should not mistaken for pathology. We have the radial lobe, whereby the right lobe extends below the lower pole of the right kidney uh, towards the iliac crest, um, producing like a tongue-like projection. And this is more common in women than in men. So sometimes you see this uh, tongue-like projection, uh, which if you don't know about the anatomic uh, variants of the liver, you may think it could be a mass. So we should always take note of this when we are scanning. We also have the sciatus inversus, uh, in which we see at the right um, abdominal contents on the left. So basically you see the liver on, on the left. That's an anatomic variant. And we also have uh, pseudo fissures. I'll just, well, uh, I'll just, I will not take time on the microscopic anatomy. Uh, is there is much to say about uh, sonography of the liver and the pathologies that we, we, we're going to discuss about. So the liver consists of many functional and structural units called hepatic lobules. Then hepatic A, hepatic, hepat Hepatic arteries and portal veins bring blood to the hepatic sinusoids. And within the sinusoids, these are lined with uh, Kufa cells which remove any debris, bacteria or worn out red blood cells. And the blood is then divided into uh, the, is then delivered into the hepatic vein to the IVC. So these liver cells uh, secrete bile into the bile canaliculi, which unite to form ductiles, which in turn merge to form intrahepatic intrahepatic duct. Looking at the liver, the liver has so many functions, uh, which include the secretion of bile. We know that bile aids in, in, in digestion. So this liver is also uh, involved in bioformation, biocomposition, biofunction. The liver again removes nutrients from the blood, converts glucose to glycogen and stores it. It also stores iron and other important vitamins, which is the vitamin A, D, E, and K. Uh, in the liver, that's where cholesterol is also manufactured which is a component, major component of bile. The liver also converts excess amino acids to fatty acids and urea. It also metabolizes uh, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates and produces plasma proteins. In addition to, uh, to the liver function, the, the liver uh, is mainly responsible for detoxification uh, of drugs and, and other toxins. It also regulates blood clotting, including heparin production and regulation, fibrinogen and uh, prothrombin. prothrombin. The liver is also um, involved uh, in uh, reticular endothelial tissues, uh, which involve blood produ uh, production, uh, production of plasma proteins and antibodies, destruction of red blood cells, Phagocytos, phagocytosis, and it also is also involved in the metabolism of carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins uh, in preparation for use and storage. That means uh, it's also it's important in maintaining normal blood sugar, desaturation of fats, and conversion of phospholipids, synthesis of amino acids, formation of serum albumin, serum globulin. Uh, to mention only a few, conversion of protein to carbohydrates and fats, formation of urea and uric acid, destruction of uric acid, cholesterol uh, from, from lipids. It's also a depot, storage depot for glycogen or glucagon, amino acids, fats, vitamin A, D, and B complex, iron and copper, and it's also a blood reservoir. 
uh, as I have said, uh, it's the one of the major functions is for detox detoxification um, of drugs and other toxins. Now I'm going to look at the role of ultrasound uh, in the examination of the liver in the management of um, the patients who have been diagnosed with uh, hepatic disease, diseases such as the hepatic, uh, hepatocellular carcinoma, fatty liver, uh, to mention only a few. So the liver is an ideal, is an ideal organ for sonographic evaluation. Why? Because of its large size, homogeneous parenchyma, and also its location uh, high in the abdomen with access both uh, through subcostal or intercostal approach. So standard ultrasounds uh, with B mod, which is real-time grayscale gray morphological assessment and Doppler evaluation of the liver vasculature is augmented by newer techniques. And also uh, techniques such as the contrast in enhanced ultrasound and elastography. Ultrasound is used to assess the size, the capsular control, the parenchymal echogenicity, the vascularity, biliary tree masses uh, or collections in the liver. It is often the first test that is uh, uh, requested by physicians or do other do clinicians to suggest the presence of uh, the presence and the severity of uh, fatty liver, like in, in in areas such as North America where fatty liver disease is is, is an endemic there. The ultrasound is the first part of four in the assessment of the liver and in the diagnosis of uh, fatty liver disease. Ultrasound is recommended for surveillance methods for detection of nodules in the liver or for those who are at risk of developing uh, hepatocellular carcinoma. Again, ultrasound uh, is a method of choice for the, for the guidance of interventional procedure, procedures performed on the liver, which includes uh, ablation techniques in those with malig mal malignant tumors. It's also used in the guidance of biopsies of liver masses, the insertion of uh, therapeutic devices such as drainage tubes and transjugular intrahepatic photosystemic shunts. Uh, again, ultrasound uh, <clears throat> intraoperatively can be, it allows for detection of our previously unidentified tumors. Basically, uh, the sonographic techniques that are used uh, when uh, examining the liver, uh, the, uh, the sagittal view, transverse, coronal, intercostal, and subcostal views. These can be used uh, when you're examining the liver. There's also, because of uh, ultrasound uh, is an advantage uh, of um, when you use volumetric uh, imaging, it's, it plays an important um, role in uh, the evaluation of the liver as a single appropriately selected acquisition may show virtually the entire liver, allowing for a rapid portrayal, portrayal of liver anatomy, size, texture, and surface characteristics. Therefore, differentiation of the diffuse changes of uh, pathologies such as cirrhosis and fatty liver from normal are enhanced, as well as the multiplanar reconstructions used in this volumetric imaging. It also helps in in the diagnosis of uh, these pathologies. We also have contrast enhanced ultrasound. I'm sure in some other countries they are now using it, but in, in other countries such as ours, um, yet to see it's being, being done. There's also elastography. Uh, this depends on um, 
departments and uh, the equipment. Some are using elastography in, uh, in the evaluation of liver lesions and the liver in some, in some departments. It just depends with the, the equipment and the adoption of these uh, newer techniques. However, when we are examining the liver, there are limitations to it. This includes obesity and patients that have severe cases uh, with severe cases of metabolic disorders, such as uh, hemochromatosis and fatty infiltration will reduce detail and the diagnostic use of the scan. I'm sure we have met this uh, in, our in our experience. Uh, obesity is a major challenge when you are examining the, the abdomen, especially the liver. Looking at the protocol, I'm going to start on the preparation and equipment uh, that uh, can be used in the examination of the liver. Preparation. Normally, we tell our patient to uh, to, to stop for six hours prior the examination. This is to prevent bowel gas and uh, to prevent uh, gallbladder contraction so that we can fully examine the liver and the, gall, the gallbladder and the biliary, biliary tree as well. So we normally use the cavilinear array, um, two to six megahertz, as well as the linear array, uh, seven to 12 megahertz. Uh, this is mainly used uh, to examine the surface of, of the liver, then to examine the nodularity of the liver borders, uh, like in the cases of uh, liver cirrhosis. Uh, we also need uh, a machine with good color and power Doppler capabilities, especially when we have to assess the hepatic veins, the portal veins, the hepatic artery. We need uh, a good machine with good uh, color and power um, Doppler capabilities. So basically, when you are scanning, when you are scanning the, the liver, you first do a full sweep through the liver. Then uh, during scanning, you can be telling the patient to, uh, to take in a deep breath. So that you can you can so that you can fully visualize the superior borders of the liver. Then you have to scan the, the liver in, in both longitudinal and transverse uh, views. So you look in transverse up and down from the left lobe to, to the right lobe. Uh, that's where you can use the subcostal approach. Uh, you look uh, in the transverse through the right lobe or subcostally. Uh, usually, when you are doing, uh, when you are scanning a uh, subcostally, abdominal distension can assist in, in, in visualization where you have to ask the patient to, where you have to ask the patient, uh, we'll be giving the patient's instruction to distend their abdomen. You can also scan uh, intercostally to ensure um, thorough visualization. That way you may use, um, uh, I've seen some use the, the, the sector array uh, probe to do the intercostal. You can, uh, you can use it as it fits uh, well uh, between, between the ribs. Then the left lateral decubitus position, uh, it's also important, you can tell the patient to, to attain this position for the assessment of the right lobe only after checking for fluid. That is for in patients where you may have seen ascites. So this is just an illustration of the, the sagittal views, which is the, we use the parasagittal plane. So this view, normally you see the right lobe of the liver 
as well as the kidney, it's important for you to compare the echogenitis, echo, to compare the liver and the right kidney, to compare the echogenicities. And it also helps you to say whether the liver is, is, is has increased uh, echogenicity, parenchyme or echogenicity, or even the, the kidney. You can actually tell the, the if the kidney itself is, is brighter um, than normal. We also have the intercostal approach, the one that you have to scan in between the ribs. So that one normally shows the hepatic, uh, the midway hepatic vein, as you can see on, on that ultrasound uh, image. You can see this image. Uh, you can tell the right, uh, the right part of the right hepatic vein and the, the midway hepatic vein as well as part of the of the left hepatic vein. We also have the subcostal scan plane. Um, this one. It shows the liver. Um, you can see the diaphragm there. Then you can see the, mainly the portal veins, the right portal vein there. We also have uh, the scan plane in transverse, whereby you 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 put your probe uh, in the epigastric region. Uh, that way you see the left lobe. That that's. That's the technique that will help you uh, examine the part of the left lobe. Uh, we know this this view. We normally use it also to examine the pancreas and other uh, organs, retroperitoneal organs. So, what exactly are you supposed to be looking at when you are scanning uh, for the liver? We all know when we are writing our reports, we normally talk about the size, we normally talk about the echo texture, we normally talk about the echogenicity, we normally talk about the outline um, and others. So basically you look at uh, you look at the the the, the liver as an the the norm, the echo texture is it homogeneous is it uh, heterogeneous you also look at the liver as in is 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 the, is it uniform which is homogeneous or is it attenuative like in our case uh, we can see uh, I've put images to demonstrate a normal liver echo texture which is homogeneous as well as an attenuative limb. Um, liver, which is fat, we normally call it uh, a fatty liver. I'm sure you can you can tell the difference. We, we can also describe the liver in terms of the echo texture. As I have said, uh, is it smooth or is it coarse? We know in the normal echo texture of the liver is smooth, uh, as demonstrated by, by one of the images there. And the coarse echo texture, when you see the, the liver with this echo texture, it signals um, some pathology, as we, we are going to see in our future slides. We also, when we are writing our reports, as I have mentioned, we also talk about the liver size. So the liver. Uh, Normally, the, it's, it's measured in two, two ways. There is the mid clavicular and the mid hepatic. So when we are measuring the liver using the mid uh, clavicular, uh, we normally measure the, the liver in the mid clavicular line from the anterior diaphragm to the lower, the lower edge of the liver. And when we are using this measurement, a normal liver should be less than or equal to 13 centimeters. Then we also have the mid hepatic uh, way of measuring the liver. In this way, the liver is measured for, in the mid hepatic line uh, from the posterior diaphragm to the lower, uh, 
to the low inferior edge of the liver. And when you are using this measurement technique, the normal liver should be uh, 16 or less. However, we should take into cognizance that the liver measurements vary uh, according to the, uh, the patient's age, the patient's weight. Uh, so sometimes when you see a, an obese patient or uh, patients, who, depending on the habitus of the patient, 17 centimeters uh, can be considered a normal value uh, depending on the patient, on your patient. So it, it varies from one patient to another. When we are scanning the liver, uh, we should uh, take note of the, the following series. That means this is, uh, this is part of the, this is the protocol. And these are the images that you're supposed to, to have for you to fully, to have fully examined the liver. There is the left lobe. Uh, you have to look at the left lobe in both longitudinal and transverse sections. You also have to look at the caudate lobe in both longitudinal and uh, uh, transverse sections. Then the IVC in longitudinal, you can also see it in, in, in transverse. Then we have the porta hepatis, uh, the comparison uh, of, the, of the liver to the right kidney, that image should be, should be there. We, all, we, we also have to, when you are assessing the liver, you should also include um, assessment of, uh, this, of the left hepatic vein. It's normally in transverse section, the left portal vein, the right portal vein, mainly in transverse section again, the middle and the right hepatic vein. Then we also look at the flow, blood flow uh, using Doppler. Color, color Doppler and spectral Doppler of the hepatic veins, hepatic artery and portal veins. So you should also look at um, the hepatopetal flow in the portal vein. This signi sig uh, signifies normal flow in the portal vein. It should be hepatopetal. If you see an, a, the opposite, which is the hepatofibril flow in the portal vein, that signifies uh, a pathology. As I've said, you also look at the hepatic uh, vein flow. Then the normal anatomy has to be documented, documented, and you also have to document the pathology in two planes, which is the longitudinal and the transverse views, including measurements and perfusion of uh, what it, what, uh, whatever lesion that you may have seen on the liver. It is very important to capture those uh, lesions in two planes, measure them, and also uh, assess the vascularity. These are the images uh, that are part of the series that I was saying comparison of the right, right uh, kidney to the liver, the middle and the right hepatic veins, the corded lobe, the porta hepatis, the right portal vein, the left lobe, the hepatopetal flow that I was talking about in the, in the portal vein. That's the normal flow that you're supposed to see. If you see otherwise, that means there is, there is a pathology there. Then we also have the middle hepatic. We also assess the flow. That's the normal flow. To take note of is an image must not be taken if it does not have a vessel in it. That means either of the images of the liver that you take, they should include either the portal vein or the hepatic vein, because you must be able to identify which seg segment of the liver that image has been taken in. So it's very important when you are capturing your images to make sure you include a vessel in it as it helps in um, 
delineating one segment from the other. Then you also have to look at the direction of flow in the portal vein by scanning intercostally to get optimal, optimal directional flow with color Doppler. Then use spectral, spectral Doppler to demonstrate hepatopetal or hepatofibril flow. So the liver, for you to fully, fully examine the liver, as we had mentioned when we're looking at equipment selection, color Doppler and spectral Doppler capabilities are very, very important in assessing our, our vessels in the liver. We're now going into, the, into liver pathology. They, there are a lot of pathologies of the liver. I'll mention um, just a few. So these ones are mainly, I've grouped them into categories, which includes the diffuse parenchymal disorders, uh, cysts, infections, benign tumors, malignant tumors. Uh, here is a list of the common pathologies that we normally find, the fatty livers, the cysts, portal uh, hypertension, hepatic vein thrombosis, cirrhosis, trauma, metastasis, hepatocellular carcinoma. These are uh, part of the common pathologies that we normally see. So I'll start with diffuse parenchymal disease uh, as a category, and uh, I'm going to talk about fatty liver. So basically, fatty liver can be diffuse or it can be focal. By diff diffuse, we mean the entire liver is affected. By focal, we mean uh, a certain section of the liver uh, may be affected. So in the diagnosis of fatty liver, we, we mean there are about four um, points to take note of for you to come up uh, with the diagnosis of the fatty liver, you have to check for parenchyma or hyper echogenicity, uh, intensified attenuation, poorly visible vessels, and number four, focal hypostiatosis. So the presence of all four signs, all, of all these four signs leads to the diagnosis of fatty liver. Focal uh, steatosis can be, they can be focal sparing or focal infiltration. So when we're talking about fatty liver, uh, in focal uh, infiltration, focal sparing, there is a, a localized absence of fatty change in a liver. And it are uh, like when the whole liver is affected by 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 the metabolic uh, fatty metabolic dis uh, disorder, this fatty fatty metabolic disorder, part of it may be spared, uh, resulting in fatty infiltration. It's important for us to differentiate uh, focal focal sparing from a liver lesion. As um, it's, it's important to recognize that uh, there is focal sparing so that we prevent uh, false positives of uh, diagnosis of uh, liver lesions, which are hypoechoic. And you may think that it's a mass when it's just a, a fatty focal uh, sparing. So normally, sorry, I'm trying to get uh, back to my, my slides.
normally focal uh, sparing uh, typical is a typical geographic appearance. So for you to differentiate it between, uh, from a, a liver, a hypo, hypoechoic liver mass, uh, we have to look at the, these aspects that um, focal fatty infiltration usually occurs adjacent to the portal hepatis. It normally occurs clo uh, in the, uh, close to the gallbladder fossa, adjacent to the falciform ligament, and also in the subcuspular uh, parenchyma. These important features, along with location and echogenicity, uh, and the absence of mass effects and the absence of distortion of uh, hepatic vessels that run through that region. Those, are, those characteristics, they help us in differentiating um, focal, inf infiltration, focal infiltration from uh, hepatic mass. I'm going to talk briefly about diffuse fatty liver. Usually, this uh, diffuse steatosis is normally graded into three. Uh, there is grade one, grade two, and grade three. Um, with grade one, there is increased hepatic echogenicity with visible periportal and diaph diaphragmatic echogenicity. Then for us to say this is grade two, uh, there is increased hepatic echogenicity with uh, imperceptible peripotal echogenicity without or obscuration of the diaphragm. Then for us to say this is grade three uh, diff diffuse steatosis, there should be increased hepatic echogenicity with imperceptible peripotal echogenicity and obscu obscuration of the, of the diaphragm. I'm also going to talk about hepatitis as another uh, common pathology. It can be infectious or non-infectious. So the hepatitis can, can also go under infect, uh, infections of the liver. Uh, generally, hepatitis uh, re refers to the inflammation of, of the liver, which can be caused by, by viruses, bacteria, fungus, and other parasitic uh, organisms. Then it can also be caused by um, alcohol, drug abuse, autoimmune auto disorders, or, and other metabolic uh, diseases. So in acute hepatitis, we have, uh, mind you, we have acute hepatitis and chronic hepatitis. In acute hepatitis, I'm going to talk about uh, the, the sonographic findings that we normally see. Uh, we, the liver is uh, rel rel relatively enlarged. That means uh, based on the measurement uh, technique that you would have used, the, either the mid clavicular or the mid hepatic, for you to say the liver is enlarged, it depends with the, the, the the liver measurement technique that you may have used. The liver uh, trainers, uh, yes. Sorry, trainers. Uh, yes. the your your slides are not uh, uh, moving. Oh. Uh, yeah. So the things that once I make you host, I can't unmute myself. So for now, just try and uh, move. I think uh, we must be on. I'm not really sure if I can use the, so I try to, I'm going to make you host now, but I won't be able to, to talk to you. So if you can just uh, turn your WhatsApp on so that I'm able to text you on WhatsApp. Okay. In case of an instruction, but for now I'm just making you host again and then you, you move to the current uh, slide. All right. Can so I just, you Sorry, can I just stop uh, uh, sharing, then uh, come back again? 
to, to make sure it's on it's on slideshow. Hello. Okay. Okay, uh, it's saying host disabled participant participant screen sharing. I'm, I'm unable to, sh to share the screen. Okay. All right. Sorry guys, I'm back. Uh, can you hear me? I was talking about acu acute hepatitis. Uh, the sonographic findings include an enlarged liver, uh, a steady sky liver appearance, uh, which, is, which, which we normally see by uh, increased peripotal echogenicity, that we call peripotal coughing. There's also, we can also see uh, gallbladder wall thickening uh, in hepatitis, which we can delineate from uh, cholecystitis by the absence of the Murphy sign. Uh, then also uh, the presence of uh, enlarged reactive uh, protohepatitis lymph nodes can also help us in the diagnosis of acute hepatitis. Chronic hepatitis, basically, uh, the, there is a generally increased liver parenchymal echogenicity uh, and decreased the number of portal vein radical walls. The size may be normal or may be enlarged. We also have liver cirrhosis. In liver cirrhosis, uh, the sonographic, sorry, sorry, sorry. sonographic findings include volume distribution, redis volume redistribution rather, uh, a cosy echo texture, nodular surfaces. That means uh, the outline will be irregular. We also have portal hypertension characteristics that include ascites, uh, splenomegaly, and, and uh, sometimes uh, varices. These are part of uh, sonographic findings of liver cirrhosis. Then we also uh, under infection, liver infectious diseases, we also have uh, hepatic abscesses which mainly present uh, sonographically as complex fluid field collections with, them, with mixed echogenicities and a thick, uh, thick wall cystic lesions, or sometimes the cyst will be having fluid, fluid fluid levels. So the, these are uh, some of the images of uh, uh, hepatic abscess. We also have liver cysts. We have simple hepatic cysts. And these ones are more common. 
we oh we have a uh, hepatic cyst that may have uh, peripheral uh, puckering, which is frequently seen, uh, or other in in otherwise uh, simple hepatic cysts. We also have complex cystic lesions as part of uh, liver cysts. These are more often due to hem hemorrhage and, and may have internal echoes, thick walls, septations that are numerous or thick or may have solid elements or calcifications. We also have uh, cysts with multiple internal membranes and uh, solid mural thrombosis. We also have other liver cysts with diffuse low level um, internal echoes. Then uh, some examples of liver cysts include uh, the hydrated cyst, uh, where we see a, a big cyst with daughter cyst inside, uh, and it normally occurs in echinococcus. Then there's also um, vascular lesions, such as aneurysms, that can simulate cysts on B mode, but you can, uh, you can then. Uh, distinguish them from cysts, simple cysts, uh, by the use of color Doppler. Then we also have benign tumors. These include uh, the likes of uh, hemangiomas, uh, hepatic adenomas, and focal nodular hyperplasia, uh, as you can see, these are uh, part of the, these are some of the sonographic appearances of uh, benign tumors. I'll be rushing through because of time. Uh, this is an example of another benign tumor, the focal nodular hyperplasia, in which the, the mass can be iso isoechoic or nearly, uh, can be isoechoic or nearly isoechoic to the liver parenchyma. Uh, these are focal, focal nodular hyperplasia. We have uh, malignant tumors of the liver. Uh, we have the lymphoma. And we have the likes of hepatocellular carcinomas. Uh, these are the sonographic appearances. Uh, normally, the lymphoma, uh, you see multiple homogeneous hypoechoic solid liver lesions. The hepatocellular carcinoma, uh, sonographically, it can be hypoechoic, can be complex, can be echo echogenic. Uh, it's usually an ill-defined complex mass. We sometimes with a tiny peripheral hypo hypoechoic halo. And when you put your color Doppler, uh, sorry, Ty. Yes, uh, uh, the slides are not moving again. We are still stuck on the. Um, on the liver cysts, yes. So uh, let me make you host again because I have to claim host for me to speak to you because of the microphone. Okay. So I'm making you host again and then, uh, yeah. So you can try now to move your slides. All right. Are they moving now? Uh, no, I'm still seeing liver cysts. It's still on 45 or 59. All right. Mm. Any changes? Uh, not as yet. Any changes now? Uh, no, we are still on uh, liver cysts. Still on liver cysts continued. Oh. Any change? Yes. Right. So I think you you were on uh, hepatocellular carcinoma. carcinoma. Yes. Yes, I think there. All 
So as, as I was saying, I, hepatocellular carcinomas, uh, uh, can, we can see them as solid, solitary tumors. We can see them as multiple nodules uh, uh, all over the liver. We can see them as uh, diffuse inf infiltration. Uh, so we should, uh, uh, should remember that sometimes you see a solita solitary tumor or sometimes you see multiple nodules or sometimes it's diffuse. Uh, that's where uh, CT scan, uh, that's where you can further recommend CT scan for, for you to um, clearly assess uh, the liver and the extent of some of these masses uh, in the liver in the diagnosis of uh, hepatocellular carcinomas. Uh, still on hepatocellular cell, cellular carcinomas, as you can see, uh, these are part of the these are some of the images that uh, that you can see for you to query in HCC. We also have uh, meta metastasis. So under metastasis, uh, meta metastatic nodules can, can be echogenic, they can be uh, hypoechoic. You can see the, do, the bull's eye uh, feature. They can be calcified. You can also see, they can, you can see cystic lesions. Oh, they, these are all manifestation manifestations of um, metastasis depending uh, may you move may uh, you move the slide again uh, uh, we are still on 50 oh, we're supposed we're... to be on 52 uh, can you make me the host so, so that i can be able to share share the screen yes please you are the host you can try Uh, can we now see the, metas the, the, the slide on metastasis? Thank you, we are. You may proceed. Okay, so I was saying metastasis, uh, the appearances of uh, mets in the liver normally depends on uh, the, the source where the liver is, um, where the, the carcinoma is, um, the origin. Like uh, in echogenic metastasis, these are mainly uh, from carcinoma such as the, the RCC, renal cell carcinoma, choriocarcinoma, neuroendocrine ca carcinomas, uh, to mention only a few. Then if you see hypoechoic uh, um, metastatic deposits in the liver, uh, these may be from intestinal tumors, which is the gastric tumor, pancreatic, or also fetal tumors. Then for the the bull's eye, the bull's eye appearance, when you see the, the metastatic deposits uh, with the bull's eye appearance, these are mainly um, due to carcinoma, bronchogenic carcinomas. Then if you see uh, met metastatic deposits as um, calcifications, that will be calci calcified. These are mainly due to uh, carcinomas of the colon, of the pancreas, the leomyocarcinomas, ovarian cystadenocarcinomas, uh, teratocarcinomas. Then the cystic um, appearance of the metast metastatic deposit deposits in the liver may be due to, may be due to uh, carcinomas such as the uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and other intestinal uh, carcinomas. Uh, I'm going to look at portal hypertension as uh, another common uh, hepatic pathology. Uh, sonographic findings uh, of portal hypertension include 
spleno megali. Uh, so that's why we have to mention about the, the spleen. We have to, when if we are, we are querying and put our hypertension, we cannot do away without uh, measuring the and assessing the, the spleen. Uh, ascites, the presence of ascites also is another um, sonographic feature for portal hypertension. Then we have uh, uh, portosystemic uh, venous collaterals. We may see um, collaterals in the in the of the of the portal veins. We may even see collateral uh, vessels in the spleen. Um, these ones may help us to uh, to narrow down the differentiation to differential diagnosis to portal hypertension. Also, the presence of hepatofugal portal flow can also help us to in the diagnosis of portal hypertension. Then we have portal vein thrombosis. Uh, we are going to see that with the portal vein thrombosis and portal hypertension, the sonographic appearances are almost, are almost the same because uh, portal hypertension, uh, one of the causes is, is portal vein thrombosis. So uh, sonographically, you can see the inecogenic thrombus in the portal vein. You can, you can also see uh, portal vein collaterals expansion of the caliber of the, of the portal vein itself. Then you can also see cavernous, cavernous transformation um, as a sonographic feature that will help you to say this is, uh, this is portal vein thrombosis. Then in the portal vein, if you see a pulsatile flow, that flow that we normally see in arteries, that can also help you in uh, creating uh, portal vein thrombosis. We also have hepatic uh, vein thrombosis, which is sometimes called the bad Chiari syndrome. Sonographically, we also see ascites when there's uh, thrombosis in the hepatic veins. We see the liver is normally large and bulbous. We can also see um, a hemorrhagic infarction on the liver, uh, the cord, the corded enlargement. So the Coded lobe will be enlarged uh, in some cases of uh, hepatic vein thrombosis. We also see abn uh, abnormal intrahepatic collaterals and also assess the flow um, in the hepatic vein and the IVC. Normal, a normal flow in the hepatic veins and IVC is uh, phasic. So when you are assessing and you see that there is absent flow, there is reversed flow, or turbulent or continuous flow in the hepatic veins or IVC, that can be a signal for hepatic vein thrombosis. Uh, there's also trauma, hepatic trauma. So when we are doing the first uh, abdominal first, we should also assess uh, the liver and normally, um, you can see lacerations, you can see evidence of uh, hemorrhage uh, in, in the liver. And this hemorrhage depends uh, whether it's, it's acute or it's long standing. Sometimes you see it, you see it as um, uh, fluid cystic um, lesions in the liver following trauma, or sometimes you see echogenic um, lesions uh, that could be. Uh, long-standing hemorrhage, but with time again, it becomes cystic. So on B mode, um, you see some of the sonographic findings uh, include subcaspular hematoma. Uh, as I was saying, it can be unecho unechoic, uh, that is in the acute phases. Then after 24 hours, the you can see an echogenic uh, area or an echogenic lesion uh, for hemorrhage. Then in about four to five days, uh, it can be hypoechoic. After a week uh, to four weeks, you see internal echoes, septations, 
that may develop within the hematoma. Uh, you can see uh, intraparenchymal hematoma is a rounded echogenic or hypoechoic foci. You can also see bilomas uh, in hepat hepatic traumas. These are rounded uh, unechoic loculated structures. Then you can also see uh, well-defined sharp mar margins close to the bile duct. That may uh, also um, tell you that the, there is a biloma. Then uh, lacerations that lacer you can see lacerations, parenchymal tears, and other irregular defects. Sorry, I'm just rushing because of time. So after assessing the liver, you may as well um, recommend for other imaging modalities such as CT, MRI. We know that they are superior in terms of uh, uh, localization, um, in terms of um, assessing the extent of some of the masses that may have, we may have seen, in terms of uh, assessing um, enhancement uh, of some of these uh, liver lesions. Uh, there's also an issue of correlating uh, with, 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 with lab findings. So sometimes a patient may come into the department with, the, with a file, they may have done uh, the necessary lab test before they come for a, for a sonogram of the liver. So sometimes it's just good to have an idea of some of the of these um, liver function tests, we have the AST, the aspartate amino transference. It's um, when you see it increased, uh, this is due to uh, uh, the presence of a liver disease. And this is uh, very sensitive in the diagnosis of hepatocellular diseases. So also a mild increase in this uh, AST levels can tell, it can tell you that there is biliary dis disease. It can then direct you to um, look closely at the biliary uh, system so that you can be able to see, is there any obstruction um, that may be in the biliary tree? There's also the LALT, the alanine amino transference. Uh, it's another liver function test. The, if it's increased, it also signifies uh, the presence of hepatocellular diseases. And this is, uh, this is also important it's, and it's 100% specific in, in trauma cases. Other liver function tests that you can look at, uh, bilirubin, if you see it increased in the patient's notes when you are checking the patient's notes, the, if it's increased, um, it means uh, that the patient uh, uh, can have jaundice. So that means you, you should look for the presence of obstruction, um, presence of calculi, whether in the, in the gallbladder or in the cystic duct or in the common bile duct. So it will direct you to, to focus uh, your examination. There's also the serum protein albumin uh, if it's reduced, this is this signifies the presence of hepatocellular uh, diseases. But with biliary obstruction, this uh, tests normally it shows normal levels. There's the ALP, uh, which when it's increased, also there, there may be biliary obstruction. We also have uh, amino. We also have alpha fetal protein uh, tests, uh, which is mainly which mainly shows increased levels in the presence of hepatocellular carcinomas. Then we have the GGTs. Uh, we have also the prothrombin time, um, which can help you to to focus uh, your your examination, and also to have this uh, a correlation with this lab uh, test, the liver function test can actually help you to narrow, narrow down your, your differential. Uh, these are my references. Thank you.
thank you so much, uh, Trinus, for that uh, wonderful presentation. I mean, the number of slides does indicate uh, how, you know, uh, uh, like the, in terms of the content of the liver, what we need to look at mm -hmm. from the anatomy, the pathophysiology, the microscopic anatomy, and then I think even the issues that Chitumba told us in terms of the inflammatory response, I think at this point we're able to appreciate uh, certain aspects of uh, imaging. So because we've really gone into, I think, extra time, I'll kindly ask people to unmute their microphones so that now we may pause our questions. I will ask to unmute all so that you are free now to ask any questions. Please be free to ask. Those that want to ask, please may you ask. Mr. Chitumba, go ahead with your contribution. Or... I think Mr. Chitumba is saying that he is uh, muted. No, but I asked all to unmute. He can unmute now. So I'm um, seeing a message that he was he need to be unmuted. Yeah, I think everyone else is unmuted because uh, I can't see what it is. Mr. Chitumba. Hello, Mr. David. Yes, please. You may go ahead. We can hear you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chinese, for the presentation. That was a wonderful presentation on my part. However, there are a few glitches that I want to highlight from the presentation that they've made. Uh, there is the aspect of pathophysiology that you mentioned uh, uh, in, your, in, in your topic. Because we have done so many pathology in your presentation, the idea of our the part of it that did not just did not come out. So now it is it has made it very difficult for one to to follow a single pathology based on the part of physiology because you did so many pathologies in a sense uh, it is somewhat uh, made it difficult for us to follow the pathologies and to actually give a, an impression that we can we can actually identify the seed pathologies when we are doing the actual scan. I think it was uh, going to be better for us if you had maybe done three or so pathologies. Then you just dwell on the pathophysiology. Then you can actually distinct a bit with the other pathologies. Then other pathologies we could have done them some other time. Uh, the other aspect that you mentioned is some way you said. Um, Portal thrombosis. Then you talk talk, talk about Badikiari uh, syndrome. I think, from my understanding, Badikiari syndrome is a condition that affects the IBC and the and the, the hepatic vein. So basically, when the portal veins and the IBC are blocked, that's where you do have a condition that is called Badikiari. It can actually cause partial occlusion of all the, the uh, hepatic veins, or some might need to be occluded. Uh, so, okay, uh, sorry. Hello? Yes, yes can we can hear you. you. Yeah, I think when you're presenting, maybe you, you, when, you, when you're talking, I don't get you so well. I think it's correct when you say it's hepatic vein thrombosis. I, 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 I hear you as if you say it's portal vein thrombosis. So that was correct as well. Okay, so those are my contributions only. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chitumba, for that. Welcome. Um, any other question, contribution?
Hello. Maybe I didn't get my answer. Uh, on the on the worms. Yeah, on the liver flukes and how they would present themselves on the on the mash. Um, I think I, I do remember seeing, I'm not really sure, I had, I've seen an ultrasound uh, in which they they were showing worms, I think that is ascariasis, is where you are able to see, but unless, you know, there are, there are large worms and then there's probably abscess formation, then you would, uh, you would see. Because I think uh, I'm not really sure, but I think even on conventional radiographs, we see them as maybe soft tissue density cords. Sometimes even when they cause uh, obstruction. So I think where you are able to see gas food, uh, features in the liver with uh, maybe uh, uh, like some cyst formation, I think those could be associated with. But I've seen videos of the live worm in the liver. Okay, Mr. David. Mr. David, yes, sir. Yes, Cuthbert here. Yes, Cuthbert, may you? Okay, just just a contribution on the, the question of the worms. Yes. Uh, right now, I, I have an image with me. I've only seen one in the CBD. I have the image. I think uh, I will share with the person who's uh, asking. I've seen one, only one in the CBD, and the mm. sonographic findings you see. Uh, an echogenic, depending on the position, you see yes. an echogenic, echogenic structure mm -hmm. just appearing in the background or in the interface of the liver. That's one. And then when you put your 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 CBD in the longitudinal section, you see a double line lucens tube within the the CBD. Okay. You actually see it when it's live. You actually see it actually moving it. I have a very clear image on uh, how I picked it, so I'll just capture it and maybe send it on the group so that uh, people may also appreciate. I've only seen one. I've seen one at least. Okay. And then uh, my 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 second contribution and question. Uh, I was I also wanted to agree with the, what Mr. Chitumba said. I was I was also following the pathophysiology, but uh, he has clarified on the issue of the body cherry syndrome. However, mm -hmm. I want to contribute on the portal hypertension. It's very important. I think she didn't mention so much about uh, the actual measurements and uh, the quantification of portal hypertension. So the first thing you have to consider that. The hepatic veins in proximal, proximal portion, they should not measure, they measure more than 10 millimeters. And the distal portion, they measure more than six millimeters. That can give you a chance that, oh, there is portal hypertension <coughs> happening. More importantly, it's very important to realize that the right-sided heart failure may also present with liver diseases. For example, you find that the hepatic veins may also dilate and appear pulsata, like she said. More importantly, you also have to note that these same hepatic veins may also dilate and it can give you a larger picture on what is happening up in the heart. Otherwise, I wanted the clarification and quantification of portal hypertension with measurements. Thank okay, you. Can I, can I just elaborate on that? Uh, in portal hypertension, uh, the normal uh, portal vein pressure is normally between 5 to 10 uh, millimeter Hg or 14 centimeters uh, H2O. So when there is portal hypertension, we normally define it by um, the way hepatic pressure or direct portal, portal vein pressure. We can also define it by looking at the splenic vein pressure, which has to be more than 15 millimeters. Uh, and we can say there's portal hypertension if the portal vein pressure uh, is more than 30 centimeters uh, H2O. This is when measured uh, surgically. So when you measure the, the the hepatic vein, the pressure usually uh, is above five uh, millimeter Hg, uh, greater, greater than the IVC pressure. 
Thank you. Thank you so much for that clarification. Thank you. Thank you so much. The one question I had for that program. She I lost her what that means. That how she went to Lusaka. I don't know which private hospital was treating. They're doing a good any other questions? Any any other questions, Chadwick? You had your hand up. Hello. For me, for me, I'm done. I think uh, I'll call this guy. I have got one question concerning you to obese individuals. Are you getting me? Yes, we are getting you. Yeah, presenter said uh, it's a bit uh, difficult to get uh, good images and details on uh, obese patients or yes, obese sir. individuals. And by this time, we have got many obese individuals in our areas. Now, how can we improve the images pertaining to these obese patients as per good management and uh, in a sense of helping them. Because if you are walking around in the streets, we have many obese people around us. Okay, fine. Enjoying the code with the code for me. Enjoy. Hello, we have a question on the floor. Okay. Can I just uh, try and answer that one? Yes. Uh, normally, obesity is it's, it's just a limitation in ultrasound. And it's actually difficult for you to, to get a, a, a clearer visualization of the liver, parenchyma. So in, in difficult cases, you may end up uh, recommending uh, for CT, maybe. Is, sorry, is, it, is it a big deal? No, I'm sorry about that. I got worried. That is after you have tried uh, all the necessary views, the intercostal, intercostal view, you know, where you'll be uh, scanning uh, in between the ribs. 